If Intel's new ARC GPU claims prove to be true in testing, then it's a pretty exciting day for Intel ARC and for GPUs in general for competition. So Intel just dropped the A750 GPU price, that's this one, officially. So they've cut this price from $290 official MSRP to $250 as of today. And additionally, they have new drivers where they're saying the performance uplift is upwards of, depending on what metric you look at, 77% in average FPS for actually relevant games like Counter-Strike Go. So that's cool. That's, that's what Intel needed. Now, the company also did the usual thing where they talk about how many gamers there are, how many people play games and whatever. In a lot of presentations, for us, that always feels like pointless pandering where the company is basically telling you, here's why you should care about video games. Look, the numbers say that people like them. There's a lot of money in them. That's why we should like video games. In this case, Intel acknowledging how many people play Counter-Strike Go was actually really cool because in this instance, it tells us that this isn't the usual, hello, fellow kids, I'm aware of video games. It was the, we know this is a big Thanks, problem Steve. that the drivers are trash in these games. We're going to fix it. So that was good. That's what we're talking about today. Uh, they have some other news as well, but the main stuff is going to be performance uplift. Before that, this video is brought to you by us and store.gamersaccess.net. We are in the final 24 hours of availability for our Disappointment T-Shirt 2022 edition, featuring an artifacted red, green, and blue GPU on the front to mark the first time all three manufacturers hit the market in the same year. The back uniquely features the dates for the most disappointing launches of 2022. Although we'll reintroduce the front design in the future with a new back, this back design is limited and part of our Disappointment Tour series that we launch each year as a means to support GN's benchmarking and journalism early in the year. We're closing sales in 24 hours from this video or when the supply sells out, whichever is first. So head over to store.gamersaccess.net to grab either a 100% cotton shirt or a lightweight tri-blend while they're still there. Getting straight into the updates, no fluff here. So there's three ARC GPUs that exist right now. The, all three of them will benefit from these driver updates. Intel made a big note that there are something like 1 million peak uh, active players in CSGO daily, which is why they were specifically pointing out CSGO as a focus point because it matters. It, it may be an older game on an old API, but a lot of people play it. That's all that really matters here. So the three GPUs, as a recap, there's the A770, that's Intel's most expensive. There's the A750, which is the one getting the price cut. It's also the most relevant one because the A770 in our original reviews, it was kind of hard to justify versus just save the money, go for the A750, you get most of the performance for a lot less money. And now that's even more true because the price drop. The A380 exists as Intel's low end and also basically the only low end GPU that's modern on the market right now and uh, modern by the newest standards. That wasn't supposed to ship to the Western market. It has made its way to the West. In the US right now on Newegg, it's $140, the A380. The A750 will be $250. And then the A770 remains an MSRP officially of $350, plus or minus a bit, depending on where and when you buy it. So that's the recap. Now, uh, NVIDIA and AMD, they only have competition from their previous generations at these price points. So NVIDIA has some 16 series and some, some of the low end 30 series, low end and giant air quotes there, floating around still in the cheaper price classes. And then AMD has the 6000 series, like the 6400, 65XT floating around. 6600 is probably the most relevant out of all of the GPUs right now in the 200 plus or minus $40 price category. But Intel is the only one that is like actively competing here until NVIDIA and AMD launch something new in this territory. But they're both trying to bleed the high end before they put something out in the, the low end. All right, average FPS improvements. So now that you're caught back up, for performance gains, some of Intel's largest claims are in actually highly played games, even though they're older APIs. So this slide, actually, this slide would have been awesome if it had a scale, but it only marks 1.0 as a normalized baseline, and then it doesn't declare the top of the scale. The same goes for this slide, showing Intel's performance normalized against an RTX 3060, where we, again, lack the top or the bottom of this range. So although those actually look like they would have really useful data, uh, they're pointless. Fortunately, Intel does have some slides, like charts, with numbers. So let's look at the charts that have numbers. That's what charts are for. 
The first slide is for DX9 performance improvements, where Intel listed both the absolute and the relative performance. For absolute performance, although we're some reason lacking bar labels that make it easier to read, but at least we have a number somewhere, we can see games like CSGO have improved by nearly double with Intel's testing methodology. The Half-Life 2 results unsurprisingly show similar gains, given that Half-Life 2 uses an older version of the Source Engine. Other Source Engine games include Left 4 Dead 2 and TF2, both of which have less exciting gains, so this isn't just some engine-wide thing. It depends still on how the game is built. But they're still worthwhile improvements. Let's move to a chart with some numbers on the bars, though. In this chart, Intel is self-reporting the lowest gains at 10% in Guild Wars 2 with DX9, but Guild Wars 2 is rolling over to DX11 in the next two months or so, and it will be deprecating DX9, so that'd be a different performance class. The highest is CSGO at 77%. There's Skyrim at 77% as well when using DX9. Half-Life 2 at 71%. Lost Ark at 51% improved all of these with DX9. League of Legends at 45%. Then you've got StarCraft 2 at 31% and Rift at 34%. Now, although some of these games, all of which I've played for the most part, fit the category of dead game meme, uh, the improvements are impressive and they're promising. And also a lot of people still play games like StarCraft 2, CSGO, Skyrim. So it's promising. The numbers here are for 1080p and they're for average FPS. Uh, Intel is plotting the improvement from the A750 launch driver to the newest A750 driver that's launching today when this video goes live, according to Intel. So that would be driver version 3490 launch to the newest version, which is going to be 4086. Fittingly for Intel, they should have gone with 8086. But uh, the A770 isn't much different than the A750, so you should expect linear gains there. The A380, same architecture, so probably also fairly linear gains in terms of percent scaling. All right, frame times are next. This is a huge part of the discussion, especially for Arc, because they had some frame time struggles when they first launched. Quick recap, frame times are the base metric of what creates the FPS number. So the base metric of frame rate is time. It's time in milliseconds. Uh, typically, you see frame times for, say, I don't know, 60 FPS would be the easy mark. It's like 16.67 milliseconds. That's how long it takes to render, and typically you're looking at the present time or on present for putting the frame out onto the screen. So Intel has Tom Peterson, Scott Wasson, and Ryan Trout all working there now. And these are three of the original people who worked on pushing frame time reporting and testing methodology to the forefront many years ago at this point. Uh, all of whom I respect and do excellent work in this field. So uh, the fact that they have three of the functionally founding experts on frame time testing in-house means they're probably pretty corporately aware of frame times, which is good, and they have some charts for that. So this frame time plot for CSGO reinforces that awareness. The bright white line is for Intel's newest driver with the lower opacity line in the background representing the launch driver. As a reminder, lower is better, with more consistent being best. Although Intel's previous driver sometimes technically, actually more frequently, plots lower frame times than the newer one at the very, very low end, the newer driver is far more consistent. Intel had a serious problem with massive doubling excursions from the mean, and to cut this down to just a single spike every now and then is great. And those singular spikes, they're rarely noticeable unless they're huge, like larger than the 12 milliseconds we're seeing, where it's only like a nine millisecond delta from the prior frame. And for one more on this topic, the company also presented this chart on 99th percentile uplift between drivers, plotting 114% at the high end for CSGO, or just 2%, no change in other words, for Guild Wars 2. And just as a note here, Intel is representing frame times a little differently than we do. They use 99th percentile. We calculate it a little differently. Um, but it all tells the same story, so it's fine, it doesn't really matter. But we did want to know that it's different. Now, regardless, the uplift is good, and Intel here uh, showing both the average FPS improvement and awareness and improvement in frame times is important. That's what the company needed. We want to see Intel continue to iterate and improve on the drivers because that was its weak spot. Really interestingly, when the hardware came out, the hardware was pretty impressive given its first launch for Intel in actual GPUs, but the drivers were severely lacking. And uh, that's where they're getting improvement. So the company had a couple of other slides. They talked about 1440p performance. We'll show some of those briefly while I talk here. They mostly showed similarly impressive uplifts in either average FPS or 99th percentile FPS. The same set of games for the most part with the gains ranging from basically nothing to like double. 
the company spent the rest of its time and its press presentation talking about XESS, ray tracing, and basically all it was really doing there is saying, hey, just a reminder, we have the same types of technology as NVIDIA and AMD, so we're relevant in that space as well. That's kind of all they were really doing there, though, so nothing new to talk about in that feature set. So uh, we will be testing these drivers. It's on our radar. We're, we're prioritizing it for all three GPUs. Um, so we're going to validate their claims. At present, the claims from Intel directly look good. Obviously, they need to be checked by third parties. And also, just a reminder here, Intel is showing its launch drivers versus the new driver. So don't be shocked and run to Reddit and say, like, everyone Intel was lying to you or whatever if the comparison we or other media make is more recent than launch drivers. Because that's important, too. Probably a lot of people are on newer drivers than launch. So the gain will be smaller from the newest, not these drivers, not 4086, to uh, 4086. All right, so that's the news for Intel. Pretty interesting stuff. We look forward to testing it. We'll be back soon with all that. Subscribe to catch it. And as always, go to store.gamersnexus.net to grab one of these shirts or patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.